And I'm assuming that you've practiced the throw on D a good deal by this time so that you're not having to do every time you do more. And eventually you'll get to the, the real rip-off sound that comes out. The next tune is Highland Laddie and it requires a little bit more also. It requires a double F and a double E and these with a double C and double B are the most important doublings in the whole of pipe music so you should practice them a lot. Double F, you play an F note and you two two G grace notes. Like that. There's nothing to it and you can't put one on top of the other because the finger's got to get back down before it starts the second one and that's a great relief. Try it from different notes as well, from E, from low A, in fact from any note of the scale that you think you can do it from at the moment. Double E is a little bit dangerous because the two grace notes are done by different fingers and it's possible and in fact it's very common for people to do the two grace notes one on top of the other, not giving the little gap between them. Put your fingers in position for E, you blow, you do a G grace note and then an F grace note like that and don't do what I did there don't do one on top of the other do it separate like so and you practice that from different notes to always a distinct G grace note onto the E followed by an F grace note and incidentally if you have to do it from a high A, as you will have to do later on, you do an F grace note, not a G grace note, and it's only a half doubling. Like so. Don't do the G grace note. You've lost it by playing the high A. You can't do the first one, and so you just do the second one. Well, here then is the Highland Laddie. And it's not too difficult, but you should watch the grace notes in the last two bars, or the last two measures, if that's what you call them. Uh, watch that it's an E grace note to the B, but a G grace note down to the low A each time. You might not think it matters much what grace note you play, but in fact it's very important that you play what's written down on the score. If you just play what comes into your head, you become an un undisciplined piper, and this is not really good. You become a much better piper later on if you play exactly what's in the book. For the second part of Highland Laddie, you have to learn another doubling, and this is a very, very easy one, the easiest of them all, double high A. And to play it, what you do is you take your thumb off the chanter along with the other fingers for the high A, and you blow a high A and brush your thumb down past the hole just to give a very short high G, like this. Like so. And it's important that you don't do that movement too fast because if you do it too fast, the high G that comes out is too short. And it's nice that it should just be heard pleasantly and not, not too short. Well, then everything else, I think, is, is well known to you. So here goes the second part of Highland Laddie, beginning from the last part of the first, the, sorry, the last note of the first part. So that's Highland Laddie, that's another two tunes to be added to your repertoire. Now we're going to take a little break again and go out to the country and hear the great Highland bagpipe in its proper surroundings playing the next two tunes in the book.
these two tunes represent a sort of step up in piping because they're a little bit more difficult and so unless you've practiced well the tunes that come before it um, don't just try this Carls with a Breach yet. The hardest thing however about Carls with a Breach is to know what the name means. Carl is a, a sort of derogatory term for a, for a man, uh, meaning a fellow, you know, just a rough character. And the Breeks are the trousers in Scotland. Carls with a Breeks. The name was given to the tune by people who were up fighting a battle against Sinclairs in the north of Scotland, the Campbells against the Sinclairs. And the Campbells had never seen any man wearing trousers but the Sinclairs wore, trou wore trousers, and so they could hardly fight for laughing. They thought this was such a peculiar thing that a man would wear trousers, and they called the tune that they played the Carls with the Breeks. Well, here we are, then Alistair's going to have a shot at it. He's had some of the preliminaries, E to E grip. Alistair, let me hear you doing them again, and just rest your chanter nicely on the table. E to E. Very good. F to F. G to high G and high E to high E. That's it. And the important thing is to try and put the fingers on all together and off all together. Don't do where we're cutting some off and here we extra noises. All right, that's fine. Now the torlua. And again, the hardest thing about torlua is probably how to say it. Torlua, low A to low A. You try that. No, that wasn't quite right. Try again. That's it. But a tornado always starts with a G bass, not Alistair. So put in the G bass and try it again. That's the idea. So G grace not to low A, down to low G, a D grace not, and after you've heard the low G, an E grace not up again. Good. Now try it from B to B. Oh, well, yes, okay, so as long as you get the G grace not in. Try again. Up to B though. That's it. Good, all right, now I'm going to play the first part of this tune for you and you watch it. And it goes like this. That's the first nine. Try it nice and slowly. Now it's up to B. Try it again from the B. A D. Play the B again at the end of the tone and then a G goes after B. A D goes not down. Good lad. You could do this yourself. No, you won't. I'll do it for you. From the B there, the second line. All right, have a shot. Nice and slowly. From the B. Now it's a D grace. 
is not done for no cheese. And that D grid is done off again. Good lad. Nice D to E again. Beautiful. Perfect. I'm not going to ask you to do it again. Second part. I'm going to play it over for you. Now this is very much easier. There's no difficulties in the second part if you can play the first part. Well, that's Alistair away to practice that tune and we now go on with the next tune which is the 79th Farewell to Gibraltar and again there's a new movement to learn before we can start the first part and this is what's called the birl in piping the one time when you're allowed to bend a finger it's two strikes on the bottom hole with the little finger and you can do it any way you like but probably the best way to do it is to have your little finger up towards the B finger and then hit it down so it bounces off the hole and then curl it when you're coming back like that and it should sound slowly but when you practice that a great deal it'll sound like so and you can do it with your fingers straight or you can do it up and down instead of down and up you can do it all kinds of ways and lots of people get good bills in different ways but generally this is the one you should start on and really it makes the best bill in the long run. If you think of the tip of your little finger tracing out a figure seven three-dimensionally in the air it goes down and then it comes back like that so it's really making a seven figure in the air. Don't try to do it fast just practice it slowly. Listen also for the B finger movement. The B finger will move while the little finger moves. You can't help that but don't let's hear it moving. You've got to keep it firmly on the chanter so it doesn't give you a little squiggly B in the middle of the barrel. Well, here's the 79s, nothing else new in it. The barrel comes in at the very end. The wee squeaks don't matter too much on the chanter, this is just the way the, the instrument behaves at times, um, but the squeaks on the pipes do matter, so you've got to make sure when your bagpipe is going well you don't produce them. Well, that's all there is to the first part. The second part is quite straightforward, nothing else new in it, and this is it. Notice that uh, when you're playing, you play slowly and evenly. You don't try to play it as if you were playing along with a pipe band. And another very important thing is if you make a mistake, and I mentioned this to pupils over and over again, if you make a mistake, always go back to the note before the mistake. Don't run away back to the beginning of the tune and start to take a, a run and jump at the thing hoping that you'll get right over the difficult bit. That way you've forgotten what the difficult bit was by the time you come to it and you become a world champion at playing the first few bits of the tune. Try and give every part of the tune equal practice, except for the difficult bits which get extra practice. But if you make a mistake, say from double E, from F to double E, there's no point in practicing E to double E. 
which is very, very simple. F to W is difficult. You've got to do it. So always just go back one note. There's a doctor in Montana, Warren Swagger, who came to the California summer school several times, and he was once heard to say, I can play any given note as well as Seamus McNeil. The only problem is getting from one to the other. And that's exactly the problem in piping, getting from one to the other. It's the links that count. So if you make a mistake in a link, don't just practice the second half of the link. You've got to get back and get the link from one tune to the other. The third part of the tune requires one new movement, the throw from B to C, which is a bit like the grips and things, only you, you finish on a different note from the one you start. It's played like this. You start with a B, and then you close the chanter, as we say, that's sound the low G, make a D grace note, and then come up to C. So it's like that. And you do it nice and slowly, and be sure you get the two low G grace notes, the one before the D grace note, and the one after. Okay then, here goes the third part of the 79ths. And the last part of the tune doesn't need anything new, but it is a bit tricky at the beginning of the last line of it. From the high at the end of the first line, the last part is a bit you should practice quite a bit. Anyway, here it goes. And more squeaks to finish. Well, that's time for our next break. We're going now to the, the next three tunes all together. We're going to hear them out on the hillside where is the right place to play pipes. Er, it's going to be the Erna Mansfield and then a Strass Bay, the Inverness Rand, and a real the Piper of Drummond.
Well, I'm back at the college once again. The first of these three tunes, the march, the Earl of Mansfield, has nothing new in the first part, so this is how it goes. <laughs> Well, everything in there you've had before, so it's just a matter of putting it together nice and carefully and slowly. The second part of the tune, however, introduces a new movement which you haven't had before, and that is a thumb grace note. Well, it's just done the same as any of the other grace notes. You just lift the thumb off and put it back on again. And it's done from high G to F. And so you practice like that. High G, thumb off, and then down to the F note. And that's easy enough. Then we make it a little bit more difficult by making it into a thumb doubling of F. So that it's double F, but the first grace note is done by the thumb and the second one with the G finger. So it's like so. Okay, with a bit of practice, you're ready now for the second part of the Earl of Mansfield. Good. The third part has nothing new except that it's got what we call a second ending, or a second time in Scotland, second ending other places. And what we do is that instead of repeating the, the part exactly as it's been played the first time, we play the first part of it, that's the bit along the, the first four bars, and then we jump away down and play the last line. Well, it's easy enough to, to follow once you hear me playing it, and there isn't anything new just that thumb doubling once again. So here it goes. Now we go to the repeat, and this time play the second ending. Now way down to the last line, 